Thank you for clicking. It is the 19th of April, 2024. Let's get stuck into the highlights of over 600 items added to the retro game site this week. What's new? Retro. Friday. Nice to see you as ever and thank you for watching. Um, this show is more compact than it used to be. I realise that. It is more concise, concise, squeezed in, more games, less chat, less fat bloke, uh, more games. That can't be a bad thing, can it? Can't be a bad thing. Um, thank you for everyone who watched the show last week. It was a, it was a bit more successful. Uh, at this point we are close to a thousand views which for us is decent, it's decent and I didn't advertise that video, that was natural. I do think it's because I used the word <laughs> CEX in the title possibly, everyone does! Everyone who puts the word CEX in their title seems to get a lot better traffic so I thought I'll join the party. Uh, but it did give me some abuse, I got some, <laughs> um, what did I get called? Um, uh, the, the, the show was, I, I grinned and bear it as long as I could, but this, it's a waste of time. That was one of the comments. That, ooh, <laughs> it's like a dagger through the heart. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad I'm not wasting my time. And someone else said, um, oh yeah, just, just scumbag scalper. Scalper. Uh, I, should, I shouldn't really talk about this stuff. Because, you know, I, I, I carry it around, the animosity, all of these, these abusive comments. They mean so much to me, so I'm sure I'm going to get plenty more now. Um, yeah, scalper. I am a vintage video game dealer. I buy and sell rare games, okay? A scalper, that's someone who scoops up all the new released things so that nobody else can buy it and then doubles the price and, and throws it out on eBay. That is not what I do. That is not... What Retro Games is about, we don't scalp, I don't buy any new product, we don't sell new stuff, we only sell vintage collectible video games. Jay, stop going on. Uh, okay, let's go for, I like this bit last week. Did you like this bit last week? I did. Um, let's check out all the stuff that didn't make it to this week's top 10. Our first bargain basement listings of the year and Fallout New Vegas. Everyone loves Fallout now. Only three quid. What about this Metal Gear Solid for the PS3 with its slipcase? Bargain! WarioWare Smooth Moves on Wii. Yes, what a game. Now, I would say this is the last great Wario game. Tiny, ridiculous mini games all piled into a big, fun multiplayer extravaganza. Imagine explaining this game to aliens. Uh, yeah, that's pulling a banana out of someone's nose. The real genius is that amongst the mania, they inserted moments of glorious peace. The handlebar. Turn the form baton sideways and grasp the ends firmly in both hands. Like riding a bicycle, perfecting this dance requires grace, steadiness, and tight shorts. And it's all yours for three quid. How about a collection of 38 Commodore 64 loose tapes? Tusker, Vigilante, Army Days, Gauntlet, Whizball, there's so much stuff. Okay, Xbox 360, but it's a steel book of Batman. Now this is a bargain, Final Fantasy X on the PS2. How about this, Mega Twins for the Amiga. Sadly, it does not load, but it's great for spares, got all the gumph. How about the classic Tekken on the Sony PSP? Oh my god, another game that just shows how brilliant this handheld device is. It looks like a PS2 game, doesn't it? Sadly, the casing around the disc is cracked, but it still works. Shenmue 2 in the bargain basement, yes, but look what they did to the manual. Thank you, Choices. Um, you can get these void stickers off with care. Anyone for tennis? Uh, the cover's missing off the manual. What about this theme park for the 3DO? Yes, a 3DO game in the bargain basement, wow. So let's get on with the proper formats. Here we go with Commodore and Draken, a point and click role playing game. Um, you control four adventurers. Um, you still sort out all their inventory and upgrade all their stats. Uh, it's actually a really good game, highly rated. Released in 1987, this is an early Amiga title and you can tell, can't you? You can tell. It's still a point and click adventure, but a bit more basic. 
a nostalgic reminder of times gone by. Eight years later and Team 17 released Alien Breed 3D, taking their classic top-down shooter and turning it into an FPS. Um, it, sadly, the Amiga is not suited to these kind of games. It is very blocky. A very small screen area too, but this is about as good as FPS got on the Amiga and this is for the AGA, A1200. Released in 1992, this is Ashes of Empire, um, a strategy adventure game. And the amazing thing about this is the manual and instructions are on VHS video. Who wants to watch a video of instructions? Movement papers which are activated with the minus key provide you with temporary immunity from attack. And interdiction papers allow you to enter a building that is under enemy control. Press the seven key and then the space bar when the cursor is positioned where you want to go and you will be airlifted to your destination. Arriving at your destination in a UC vehicle, check your console. The information icons can only be activated when they are highlighted green. Ouch! Okay, what about Deluxe Paint 2? Yes, early art software for the Amiga. Hang on, whose game is this? My name is Marvin. No, it's Marvin's Marvelous Adventure. A pretty decent but blatant Super Mario ripoff for the Amiga CD32. Nintendo, and it is Mortal Kombat 4 on the N64. Um, a classic franchise and quite a rare game now. Very violent. It's better than you thought, it's pretty fast. Come on then, look at the end move. Very Harryhausen like a Jason and the Argonauts finishing move, uh, but not as violent as we've come to expect from the franchise. Diddy Kong Racing, if I talk about this game anymore I'll explode, but look at the condition of this one. With GoldenEye as the landmark FPS on the system, is it any wonder that so many people tried to copy it? The faces in the game are the same, like photos stretched across polygons. Um, it's a strange look, but it's very, very much like GoldenEye. Um, and why not? It's more of the same. Uh, but it's, it's surprisingly good, better than I thought. Um, feels like a continuation, great graphics. Micro Machines, top-down racing action for up to four players and a lot better than I remembered. And now I remember why I'm glad that Electronics Boutique went bust. Do not adjust your sets, this is not the PlayStation. It's a pretty fast, zippy version of Wipeout, but it's on the N64 and another immaculate example this week. Look at this, look at the flaps. So hard to find games in this condition. Look at that manual. BBC and Electron, yes, as the provocative thumbnail suggested, we do love BBC. This is Hunky Dory. What a brilliant name for a game. What a shame it looks like this. Dungeons, four player gauntlet game? I thought Jizzburn was something you went to see your doctor about. It's like medieval Robotron. It looks a bit like a Commodore 64 game, doesn't it? Granted, I wouldn't normally pick a Tynesoft game, uh, but this Winter Olympic special has a forward by David Vine, the classic commentator. A very good evening. It's 12th night here at the Cruiser. Breaking news. Repton is a rip-off of Boulder Dash. Mr. E is a rip-off of Mr. Do. Or Dig Dug. The 3D munchie is Pac-Man in a 3D isometric space. <clears throat> uh, by fair means or foul. Now this is a boxing game that allows you to cheat, allows you to play foul moves. Check it out. Pretty nice graphics. Come on boys, you can do this. Ooh. Oh, right in the nutsack. Oh, I felt that, I felt that. Now this version includes a competition flyer. You can win a trophy and a signed certificate from Barry McGuigan. Still something very dodgy about the title of this game. Get through the level and kiss your cousin. Uh, very strange, but it's actually a very frustrating airwolf -a -thon. Yeah, so we, we've let the dragon jump over our heads. Yes, we're waiting, we're waiting. Okay, we can jump then. Oh, no. Just slightly off the edge. Okay, let's go again. Over the top. Uh, get ready, get ready, ready. Oh, jump. And, oh, and he hit me anyway. What a sleeve attack on Alpha Centauri by Software Invasion, an amazing Galaxian game, and I love this. It's the way they zoom right up to the camera. 
uh, quite different. It's got a good atmosphere about it. I'm, I'm getting Forbidden Forest vibes. Moving on to Xbox, just a quick run through. Silent Hill 4, The Room, a classic. Grabbed by the Ghoulies, disappointing at the time, but still a fun game from Rare. Metal Slug 4, the last one on the OG Xbox. Conquers, what a fantastic game that is from Rare. Brotherhood of Steel, uh, Fallout spin-off. We all have Fallout at the moment. Stake, Fortune Fighters, I fancy a stake. And New Legends, very unusual game that for the OG Xbox. I picked a couple of PlayStation games, Zeitgeist, known in the West as Jupiter Strike. It's a 3D shooter. Remember, this, this kind of perspective was all new in the PlayStation era. We were excited by it. Uh, Brotherhood of Steel, haven't I just seen that on a different format? XCOM, Enemy Within, rare PS3 game. Funky Horror Band for the Japanese Mega CD. It looks amazing, doesn't it? It's like a music rock game, but look at it. It's just a typical JRPG. Strange musical buddies talking gibberish. Streets of Rage got a really nice one in this week. Uh, yeah, brilliant. Lovely cartridge and manual. Floygen Brothers. I can never say this right. Floygen Brothers. It's a fun arcade adventure for the Dreamcast. And Galaxy Fight finishing us off with a Neo Geo CD game. It's a fighting game. You knew that. But it's kind of different. It's got kind of digitised graphics. It looks pretty fast-paced. If you like your fight in action fast, then this is the game for you. That was good, wasn't it? It was good, that bit. That bit was good. Uh, that bit reminds me of the old features we used to do in the Retro Game Show. Um, I like it. it. It takes a lot of effort to edit, but it's fun. And it's got good music, hasn't it? It has got good music. Um, okay, let's get on with the top 10. Come on, Jace, what's number 10? What's number 10? Well, I'm going to start with the Commodore 64. Yeah, 8-bit rules. Um, and it is this game, it's Jailbreak. Now, the reason I'm picking it is because it is sealed. Um, now, Jailbreak, released by the Konami label, you might know it. Um, Jackal, Jailbreak, they, they came out for MSX, um, but they didn't do particularly well. They, obviously, Nemesis was a big hit for Konami on their own label for the 8-bit machines, for Commodore 64 and for Spectrum. Uh, but when it came to Jailbreak and Jackal, they didn't do very well, uh, quite obscure. They had their own box design, you know, and you can tell, you can see the influence. I've put it up, um, you can see... Um, that it's related to the MSX games. And I mean, when this came out, I didn't even know what MSX games looked like, I don't imagine, in 1986. Um, but you can see now, oh yeah. So let's just put up an MSX Konami game. You see what I mean? They are similar design. But anyway, I would say that is a console-y box. Um, I like it a lot. Now, the, the reason this one's special is because that sticker is still intact. It is sealed! It is sealed. Um, but you could just pop open the end of the box and still get it out. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. But yeah, Jailbreak on the Commodore 64. Is it a good game? Oh yeah, this looks good. Got a bit of a beat going. Uh, yeah, we're killing. We're killing the Escape Convicts. Um, yeah, it's a, okay, it's a bit simple. But I wonder what the next level is like. Okay. A bit samey. <laughs> a bit samey. We have killed so many people. All right, let's zoom forward. What's the last level like? Hmm, a bit samey. Um, yeah, I mean, we are killing prisoners in the prison now. Though they do have guns, fair enough. Look, this is the perfect reason to keep this game sealed. What's number nine? Now, here's a format we don't talk about very often, and that is... The OG, yes, the OG Xbox, uh, not a format that we talk about very often because mm, it's a bit new. <laughs> Chase, you're so old, you think that the Xbox is new. <laughs> but you, you know what I mean, it's, it's, it's modern, isn't it? Um, I'm not sure, how many bits is it? Is it a 64-bit console? It's a 128-bit console? I don't know. I need to look that up. Embarrassing. Anyway, I picked a game, it's called Breakdown. It's an arcade adventure, but it's by the arcade legends that are Namco. Let's check it out. So it's your pretty typical first person arcade adventure, but I like this bit. You're in like a mine cart, um, an underground railway. It's quite exciting, isn't it? Brightens up a little bit in the tunnels for some reason. Um, let's just check the weapons. Yeah, we've, oh, this is gonna be good. Like a House of the Dead style on rails shooter. Oh, this is good, this is good. Uh, here they are, it, what, what the heck is that? 
some some floating light bulbs what, what just light bulbs in the sky floating shoot the floating light bulbs hmm strange game and there it is it's quite a beautiful rare game I like it I like it a lot uh, Let's have a look. There it is. There's the manual. And there's the disc. The disc definitely helps if you want to play something. Uh, what's number eight, Jace? What's number eight? Okay, so now we've got an Amstrad CPC game, and it's got to beat last week, hasn't it? We had Miami Vice on the show last week. Uh, <laughs> brilliant box, brilliant box, brilliant case, but the game didn't live up to expectations. Well, check out. West Bank. Now I love West Bank on the Spectrum. I bought this when it came out for the Spectrum. But what's West Bank like on the Amstrad? Now I don't know if my memory's playing tricks on me, but I remember this game being so much faster. Uh, but I did play it on the Spectrum. Maybe the Spectrum is just a far better machine. <laughs> Let's not start that argument. You have three buttons. You have to shoot the doors when they open. Um, but don't shoot the good guys holding the money. Oh, you see that? Oh, got him, because he suddenly he held the money, but then he pulled the gun. You've got to wait until they pull the gun before you press fire. Um, try and get all the cash. Oh, got him again. It's a simple game, but it's fun. Yeah, Gremlin Graphics, a surprise hit, quite unlike many Gremlin Graphics games. Um, you've got those three doors. It's very nice, very nice. Now we'll flap the inlay open for you. And there's a big inlay, uh, and there's the cassette. Uh, I'll bet... A nice Amstrad game, that's unusual. <laughs> What's next, Jace? What's number seven? Number seven already, and it is this. It's a rare, it's a rare game. It's a rare one. It is called Trapped 2. Um, maybe we need to find out about Trapped 1. It's Trapped 2, it's for the Amiga, but it's on CD-ROM. Um, and I thought, well, this is, this is worth a look. This is an unusual game. Let's check out Trapped 2 for the Amiga. Once the FPS ball starts is rolling on the Amiga, everyone wanted to release one. Uh, there is a whole load of stuff just like this. Um, yeah, it's it's a simple maze game. Um, we're very low to the ground. We're just kind of crawling on the ground on our bellies. I don't know if that's intentional. <laughs> um, oh, here comes... Oh, my... Look at the animation on him. Uh, the Scorpion of Doom. Uh, it's... <laughs> It's a bit pathetic. This is what happens when Amiga demo crews decide they can make games, I think. <laughs> and there it is, just comes in a regular CD case, uh, no, not even any manual. Uh, and there's the disc. Uh, it's got that helpful there, new, it's new. It's quite a new Amiga game compared to the, the majority of them. Uh, and there's the back of the case. Oh, interest, I think this stuff is interesting. It's like Virgin on the homebrew. Uh, not quite homebrew, it's a little bit better than homebrew, but you know, it's there, it's the end of the Amiga's life. And there was interesting stuff coming out by hobbyists and, you know, dedicated programmers who didn't quite make the grade to make proper games. Um, uh, moving on, Jay's number six. What's number six? Well, let's stick with the Amiga and it's Psygnosis. Yes, yeah, Psygnosis game of the week at number six. Uh, and it's an unusual one. This game is called Exit. And you know, Psygnosis famous for all those beautiful Roger Dean covers, like Pink Floyd LP covers, beautiful evocative images. Well, this is quite different to that. <laughs> this is very much looks like an ocean game, doesn't it? It looks like an ocean game, but it's not, it's Perseganus. Um, let's check out Exit. Now, I like to imagine that British Western game developers sent special envoys to Japan to discover the new ways of video games because this is a version of Soko Ban, a classic game, um, probably the most famous on the Game Boy. And you can't help feeling that this kind of game is really more suited to a handheld device. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let this level play to the end. Isn't there something funny about the shadow? It looks like you can't walk into the shadow. It's too dark. They made the shadows too dark. That black bit there. Um, yeah, so basically I'm just filling up the holes. Make a way to the exit. And there we go. Level complete. There we go then. A beautiful condition. Beautiful condition. You can hear it rattling around. I don't like that. These old Amiga games, you know, they weren't packaged well. They just throw the discs in a cardboard box with the manual and hope it doesn't do... It doesn't sound great, does it? It doesn't sound like you're buying a probably proper quality product if it's rattling around in the box like that. Um, is there an owl? I know you're thinking, no, no black 
inner box, it's the white cardboard box. Um, I think there's something funny about this. Yes, in the interest of conservation, it's ahead of their time, Basiganis. Uh, in the interest of converse, con conversation, <laughs> yeah, actually, in the, in the interest of this conversation, this inner carton is produced from recycled biodegradable material. But that would be so sad, wouldn't it? <laughs> Why are you throwing away the inner box? Think how much it's going to rattle then. Um, and there we go, there we go, we've got the disc. And we've got the manual! Discs are manual, brilliant, nothing else in there, it's just all that came with. Uh, but a very rare game, five for Seaganis. We're halfway through. What's number five, Jace? What's number five? Ah, oh, number five, and it's a classic close to my heart, the need for speed. On the 3DO, we haven't had much 3DO in for a while, um, and this is the seminal classic. Um, before I go on about anything else, let's just show you what Need for Speed, the original first Need for Speed by Electronic Arts for the 3DO is like. Ah, the digitised cockpit. I'd forgotten how good that was. Well ahead of other games of the era. Um, loads of low-lying hot air balloons. That is a feature of pretty much every race game from the 1990s. Um, yep, yeah, it's the traffic that makes this game special. Um, we're on the wrong side of the road. Uh, yeah, this isn't a British game. Um, admittedly, the draw distance is pretty terrible now. Um, but it's all about those surprise cars flying at you around the corner, all oh, little crash, and then you go third person to see the car. Is that a Porsche? Oh, a little collision as we turn around. What a game! Me and my brother played this to death. This is, you know, this is pre 3D GTA. This was, the, you know, I think, you know, you could say GTA a little bit influenced by these sort of games because there was traffic and setting up your roadblocks. Me and my brother, I remember putting a car there and then just counting how many cars are, go are gonna just queue up uh, to see traffic. And I know we saw traffic in other games. Uh, Turbo Esprit on the Spectrum. Yes, Turbo Esprit on the Spectrum does have sort of some traffic. Um, but that, I mean, that is ridiculously groundbreaking because that game is ancient. Uh, but yeah, we, it took us a while to get there, but Need for Speed, um, yeah, didn't the, is it Criterion make the original Need for Speed, did they? And then went on to do Burnout Games? I don't know, I might be just making that up. Uh, I have a habit of doing that, <laughs> as the comments will attest. Um, anyway, classic, Need for Speed. Like, I, I didn't show the inside, uh, not much to say really. Uh, a disc. There is the manual, uh, and then you've got the backup manual in other languages, and then you've got a spare space uh, to put your Frankie Goes to Hollywood Greatest Hits album. Uh, moving on, number four. What's number four? For number four, we're back to Commodore. Uh, yes, it is the Rocky Horror Show. Now, we've actually shown this regulars will know we have shown this on the show before, but it is such an exciting game. It is Rocky Horror Show for the Commodore. 128, yes, one of three exclusive 128 video games. Um, super enhanced version. Uh, let's just check out how enhanced that really is on the C128. Typical CRL, I mean, it's uh, good on them. They released a 128K game. Um, yeah, just there's the tape. Uh, beautiful clamp case, simple, but super, super rare. Uh, and if you've got a Commodore 128, then you've really got to at least have a, the software for it, haven't you? If you've, if you've lashed out, you've got, the, you've got the hardware, it's massive, it cost me a fortune. I need at least one special game to play, and I'd say Rocky Horror Show is the best C128 game. Uh, moving on, top three. Now, one PlayStation game stood out to me this week, and that is Resident Evil Survivor 2. Uh, quite, quite rare. I like the zombie image on the cover. Uh, it looks like, uh, is it a mirror? Is it a mirror? Uh, <laughs> maybe. Uh, let's check out Resident Evil Survivor 2. Now, way back when I played the first ever Resident Evil game on the original PlayStation, this door mechanic seemed like genius. It was a natural break in the action to upload the graphics for the next stage. But then, when you turn Resident Evil into an action game like this, this door mechanic seems so slow. You are rushing through the rooms. I mean, that that really just haunts the action. It changes the whole feeling. Shoot the dog, kill the dog. Um, oh, what the hell is that thing? Oh, 
<laughs> he's got no clothes on. I'm sure there's genitalia there. Uh, but yeah, look at this door. Oh, come on. I'm, I'm just bored already waiting for the doors to open. It's a shame because this is a great shooter. Um, yeah. <sighs> Kill the zombies. Kill the zombies. I think it's probably as close as the Resident Evil series got to House of the Dead, isn't it? It's like a crossover game. Uh, brilliant shooter. Uh, yeah, that's it. Lovely condition. Um, what a lovely PlayStation game. Moving on, number two. What number two? Now, I had to have one Nintendo game in the top ten, and what a Nintendo game. It is Majora's Mask. Uh, it is the second Zelda game that came for out for N64. But it is in mint condition. It is beautiful. Let's just show you the box. I don't need to show you the game. You all know Majora's Mask. But look at the shine. Look at this. Now, there is a one tiny, tiny issue. There is a little, on the bottom edge, there is a, a little bit of a scratch. Um, I don't know, it might be a residue, but I haven't, I haven't tried to get anything off there. Look at the flaps, beautiful flaps. Uh, look at the back. Um, I've got a very, very delicate, special claw grip. I'm gonna open this, spreading the weight on the flap there as I pull it open. <laughs> don't be rude, don't be rude. Um, and here we look at that. It is unused in here. That is in the plastic bag. You can see. You can see it's never been opened. It's still. It's uncreased. It's not been put back in that bag. Um, and here we go. We've got the. We've got the gumpf. Uh, we've got the N64 colourful little manual insert there. We've got the warning sheet. And what? What? There's one thing I've got to say. Look at that manual. Yeah. <laughs> yes, because it is incredible brand new uh, Majora's Mask manual. It's, you know, <laughs> I know it's blimmin' expensive, uh, <laughs> but you just don't see stuff in this condition. And it makes such a difference, you know, for your super, for the super anal collection <laughs> collectors. <laughs> um, you know, it would be a shame to ever play this. You know, you've got to keep this on a shelf. Uh, it's an investment for the future, but what a beautiful game. Uh, it's time for the number one. Come on, Jace. And just like last week, it is an unexpected number one. I'm hiding it, hiding it. Um, it is an unexpected format, unexpected game. Uh, and you're thinking, Jace, this shouldn't be number one. But it just tickled me. And if it tickles me, uh, that's enough. Uh, so number one this week is Crystal Castles. And you're thinking, Jace, that came out for loads of formats. But this format is the BBC Model B, the king of educational computers. Uh, now, Crystal Castles. <laughs> This is the reason this is special. The reason this is extra special is because of the blurb, and we do like to read some blurb. Well, um, well do you remember Julian Rignall? I mean, the, the real eight git, eight bit, eight git, eight git. Why haven't I? <laughs> Eight Git Gamers, the real Eight Git Gamers, they know who Julian Rignall is. He was a big writer in, in Zap. He wrote for loads of magazines. He's a, he's well revered editorial uh, journalist in the world of video games. Anyway, reviewed tons of stuff. Um, well, they decided rather than writing about what the game was about, they just thought they would quote from Julian Rignall. So I'm going to put up. I'm just going to put up some images of the game while I read this, and then I'll show you the game. Uh, <laughs> I've been looking forward to doing this. Okay, let's go. When I first saw Crystal Castles, its shockwaves almost knocked me off my feet. That was so long ago. I cannot conceive that you will ever buy it in a shop. I'll believe it when I see it. It's like a state of manic hysteria on diamond plateaus in deep space. Some things are beyond description. Cue the game. Julian I love it I love it when you really have bigged up a game far too much <laughs> you really have bigged it up far too much and they print it on the back of the sleeve I mean it may be what paid maybe I'm not I'm not saying that Julian if you're watching this I have I have emailed a few emails we have swapped over the years um, but you know Julian uh, that was a bit much wasn't it I, I, I was saying you didn't get paid you were just in awe of that game just so in awe of it uh, what an incredible title to end the show on. Thank you for watching. I hope you're still enjoying the new Snappy format. Snappy! Yep, 
do you know, I could never do that thing that kids did in the playground in the 80s. Snap in the old, I, I dub it on. Oh yeah! <laughs> Until next week, happy Retro Gaming, Retro Gamers! Isn't it pathetic? I'd still, I'd still like to be able to do this. I can't, I can't do it. I'm just like I'm having a fit. <laughs>